So you got a track placed in a TV show, it's airing, and you find out that there was never a cue sheet turned in because you're not earning royalties on it. And so there is this nightmare feeling and this anxiety building up in you. And you're like, damn it, like I did all that work. I worked with this library. We got this track placed and nobody's making any money. What the hell do I do? And you're probably scared and panicked and pissed off a little bit. So I totally get it. I wanted to make this video because uh, this has happened to me multiple times multiple times in my career, okay? And it's very normal, so I want you to know that you are not the only producer in this business that's ever had missing royalties or a missing cue sheet not turned in or some money or some placement or some credit that you were supposed to get and it didn't quite make it to you, at least the first time around. Sometimes we can correct that and that's what I wanna talk about in today's video. So first off, please do not panic, please don't blow your lid. Um, this happens multiple times often and it's no reason to overreact and to think that this whole industry is not worth pursuing because there's so many uncertainties and so many unknowns. And I know in the moment when you're trapped, if you're watching this right now and you're in that situation, it can feel like, well, what the hell is the point if all this work can just be thrown out? I don't know how much money I've lost or missed out on due to cue sheets or failed payments or things getting lost, um, but I'm gonna guess it's probably in the tens of thousands of dollars. So I'm just gonna let you know that. Uh, it could be a lot more than that, it could be less than that, and I have had to learn to become at peace with that because we're on planet Earth and there's a lot of things that are just outside of our control. This business does require a lot of human beings to work together to make, thing, make sure everything works together. If you've ever noticed something about human beings is they get things wrong a lot of the time. <laughs> it happens and it's not intentional and it's not somebody trying to screw you over and intentionally try to take money away from you or from me, but we're just all human beings. We all make mistakes. I am certainly king of mistakes, I make them all the time. So we just need to be aware that we kind of have to expect a little bit of this to be in our careers, okay? But we still need to work hard, still need to crank out our music. So let's just get into what you should do. First thing that people don't really think about is that um, how are cue sheets sort of generated? What's their role? Who, who creates them? Where do they get sent to? So let me just go ahead and demystify all of that because a lot of people get they think that like the producer, the composer needs to like send a cue sheet in or cue sheeting or something like that. It's like, no, you have nothing to do with cue sheets. You'll never really see one pretty much for the most part in your entire career. Cue sheets are created by the content creator. So let's say there's a reality TV show producer. Okay, there's a company, they make a particular reality TV show. When they use music um, and other assets, you know, in their, um, in their uh, TV show, in their, let's say, uh, an episode of a reality TV show, they need to include all of that into a cue sheet. And a cue sheet basically marks the time, the beginning, the end point, where in the episode it's aired, what the, the track title is. A lot of times you'll put the publisher, or the writer, or you'll put a lot of just metadata in there. Um, sometimes it's really elaborate, sometimes it's really, really simple, but just enough information so that when the, um, content creator, let's say the reality show producer, sends it to the PRO, that's who they send it to, BMI ASCAP here in the United States, or sometimes CSAC as well, that the PROs are able to go, okay, got it, this is how much was used, thank you, we can now see that this writer, this publisher, had this kind of a uh, track um, used in this manner, right, and it could be a theme, a background, a feature, all the different types of placements, for this much time, right, because they have that in the cue sheet, we're going to ingest that, and then they're also going to take into account ratings, time of day, network. There's so many things that they um, uh, calculate alongside of the cue sheet. The cue sheet does not determine your royalty alone. It is one big piece of data that helps them do that. A lot of people also wonder um, if you had a TuneSat account and you saw that your track had been detected on your TuneSat account, could you send that to the PRO as proof? As of today, right now, in the middle of 2021, no, PROs are not accepting TuneSat or any sort of audio detection software to prove that you got a placement and that you're going to be owed royalties. So I wanna make sure you guys are all clear on that. They still are looking for cue sheets. Cue sheets are the number one way that they determine whether or not you actually got a placement and whether or not there's a significant reason for them to have to pay you out, right, if something's missing. So. With that out of the way, hopefully that demystifies everything about cue sheets. So content creator sends it to the PROs, the PROs then go and divvy it out to you, the composer, and your library, which is acting as the publisher, right? So 
just think about this. We're going to use our logic here to figure this out. So if a cue sheet does not get turned in, are you the only person missing out on money when that happens? And you find out your track got placed, but you're not getting royalties. Are you the only one that missed out on that? No. Who else is missing out? Your library. Because if the track didn't show up in a cue sheet anywhere and there wasn't a cue sheet, well, no publishing money either got sent out. So there's no publishing royalties being generated. So it's not like your library sitting there laughing all the way to the bank while you're sitting there like, oh, I got no money. Neither one of you guys got paid. So the first thing you need to do is reach out to your library, not the production company, not the PRO. Okay, first thing, go to your library, whoever it is that helped you secure that placement through their clients and let them know, hey, my TuneSat account or however you figured out that you had a placement, whatever means that is, you, know, you just saw it on TV or somebody told you or whatever, you let them know, we got a placement and this is how it got aired and I'm not getting royalties and I'm not seeing any cue sheets. If you're with um, ASCAP, you can see your cue sheets uh, pop up there. BMI still as of this date does not show those cue sheets, unfortunately. Um, but in every way that you figure out that you're not getting paid, you need to let your library know, hey, not only am I missing out on money because I can tell, you're missing out on your publishing royalties and money that's owed to your business. So you guys are both in the same exact situation. And between the two of you, who's going to have a better chance of reaching out to that production company to ensure a cue sheet gets created and delivered to the PROs? Of course, it's going to be your library, right? They've got the relationship. They've been talking to them for maybe months or years. They've got their direct phone numbers. When they call, they're going to get a call back. So they're going to basically deal with the uh, client much better than you would coming from the outside to say, hey, I'm a composer with this library that you use the music from. You didn't create a cue sheet. You need to do it. It's possible that they might respond to you, but it's also possible that they'll just hang up the phone and say, get lost. Just being honest with you guys, that's very, very possible and very probably more probable than not. Um, or they'll say, oh, we'll definitely look into that and get back to you as soon as we can come up with a solution. And then just moving on to something else and they don't really care about you, okay? But a library who has an ongoing relationship with them and they care about continuing to use music from that library, they have an incentive to make sure that things are getting done properly. So that's what you need to do. It's just as simple as that. Reach out to your library and say, hey, this is the placement. I think I'm missing out on royalties. As I understand it, you are also missing out on royalties. Let me know what I can do to be of service. What can we do from here? And hopefully you're working with a library that has great communication skills and talks to you and emails you and um, directly communicates with you. Right? You're not working with some middleman company who you can't even get a hold of your library. If you're doing that, that's why I've always told you guys, stay away from those kind of situations. You really want to just directly connect with your library. So when this kind of stuff happens, you have a direct line, line of communication with them, right? And let them know. And that's pretty much the end of it, right? You can hound people. You can call people. You can try to get the PROs involved. You can do all this kind of stuff. And if you feel that passionate about it and that invigorated about it, then by all means, go for it. I personally didn't do that in my career. And the reason why is because I knew the more that I would hound, the more that I would get wrapped up in that situation, the less time I would have and less creativity and the less positive emotion I would probably have for just creating new music and cranking out new tracks and building up my catalog. So I did what I possibly could do within my control, which is reach out to my library and let them know, this is what I've seen. I think we got placed and I don't think we got paid for it. Do you mind reaching out to the client and seeing what happened? And, and putting it in their hands and letting them do it. Sometimes they'll be able to track it for you. Sometimes they'll be able to get the cue sheet and the PROs will pay you retroactively. There's a certain time limit on it. I don't know if it's like a year and a half or two years or something like that, but there is some sort of time limit where, yeah, if you say you got a placement in 1989, they're probably not gonna be able to pay you out for that, okay? So you definitely gotta be kind of timely on this kind of stuff. I'm not exactly sure what that is. Maybe one of you guys know if you wanna comment below, I'd love to learn that. Um, but do, you, do what you can and whatever's in your control. And what's in your control is reaching out to your library and letting them know and then be at peace with it. I This is my advice. Push it aside. Forget about it. Move on to your next track. Move on to your next track. Move on to your next track, okay? This is how you're going to create a career. If we get stuck on these little setbacks and these little frustrations, and it lets it eat at us and eat at us, and we take a lot of time thinking about it and focusing on it, um, that's what happens when we're reaching out to all these people and trying to track things down. It starts to, I think it kind of like make us a little bit more bitter and it kind of turns us into more of like a lawyer where we're trying to like track down legal stuff and paperwork and all this nonsense. 
and it takes us away from what our really primary purpose in this um, this job is, which is just to create music. So yes, it would be great if we lived in a in a in a in a situation on an, on a planet and in a world where no mistakes ever happened and no money ever got misplaced and no royalties ever got not generated and right that'd be great and 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 registrations always worked out and libraries always work 100% just like communicating effectively and clients always filled out the cue sheets but we got to grow up we're not 2 years old anymore we got to realize that life is full of loose ends right that's pretty much what it is but th- those loose ends do not have to stop you from still moving forward in your sync career so that's the big idea that I really want to get across to you and hopefully keep you guys motivated through some of these moments that feel like major setbacks and major sort of just punches right into your stomach. It doesn't feel good. Let's just be honest about that. So anyways, I hope that helps. Uh, If you have any questions or comments or concerns, I would always love to see those below as a comment. Thank you so much.